biomechanics lecturer Colleen Kelly is regarded as one of the world's experts on rider position, coordination and balance. She's one of the world's most sought after speakers and we were lucky enough to catch up with her on her lecture tour of Australia. Colleen, welcome to Horse Talk TV. It's lovely to be able to take the time to talk to you on your busy tour of Australia. Oh, thanks very much for having me. I love your show. It's good to see you again, Katie. Thank you. Colleen, your background, you were a dressage judge and as I understand, one of the only ones to score 100% in your examinations. And of course now you're into the rider biomechanics. How did that evolve? Well, I come from a horse riding family and uh, started doing dressage, I hate to admit it, back in the late 1970s and uh, became a judge early, early 1980s. And uh, so I've been judging for a long time, but my actual employment was is in exercise physiology, mostly working in rehabilitation gymnasiums and uh, helping people rebuild their bodies after car accidents or cardiac episodes. And uh, so I just combined it all and uh, the judging but now I work with a lot of different horse riding sports and uh, I've worked with many world champions and in so many different sports in reining and cutting and camp draft and polo and jumping dressage, pony club and para equestrian now a lot as well. Colleen, you're quite a rule book specialist. Now, how important is that correctness in international competition now? Oh, look, it was always important, uh, but now it's even more important. Our marks are getting bigger and bigger. We saw tens being given at the last Olympics, and the world record has been broken just recently. And uh, so, needless to say, it's getting more and more important. And I think that the uh, part of the rule book that the FEI have on the way the rider sits is specifically important to me and uh, it's it's always been there but I think the judges are learning more and more that the way the rider sits affects the horse so much that uh, they are marking things down like heels up and hands rolled over and the rider's leaning back or leaning forward. They are marking that down now and uh, because it's in the rule book so we can mark it down. So yeah, it's really, really important. That leads me to, to ask, I mean, the controversy about things like roll curve and horses being, you know, sort of deep and low. Uh, from the point of view of what you're teaching, what's your, what's your opinion on that? Well, I think they're really silly. <laughs> if it says put your nose in front of the vertical, duh, put your nose in front of the vertical. I mean, obviously roll curve, when it gets that bad, I mean, that's just cruelty. That's a whole different issue. And I wouldn't even speak to somebody that did that. I'd ring the police. I really would. Uh, but uh, just silly. Like if the rule book says, I will give you a 10 if you have your nose in front of the vertical, yet they have them behind the vertical, I'm going to give you a four. Well, you know, wake up. It seems pretty simple to me. <laughs> Colleen, I'm really interested to know, you have mentioned that you have borrowed techniques from other disciplines, for example, reining and western riding. Now, how does that fit in what you're doing with the fact that you know you are teaching people to ride very close to the dressage rules? And do you come in for criticism around borrowing from other disciplines? Uh, well, the criticisms I couldn't care less about, to be honest. Um, you don't get to be world's number one at what you do by listening to too much criticism. Uh, so long as I stay morally correct to what I, I, I think is, is good, and obviously within the rule book, then the criticisms I really don't care about too much. But borrowing from other sports, that's the number one little sneaky trick that I have. I mean, if you want your horse engaged, borrow the horse that sit, the sport that's going to make the sit, horse sit down the most, which is reining. If you want the horse to go fast, borrow the position of the, of the racehorse where the jockey sits a little forward and encourages the horse with the hands. And if you want the horse to turn well, well the fastest turners and the lightest turners in the world are obviously the barrel racers. So if you can steal from all sports, uh, you're going to have the best, best performing horse that you can possibly have. Colleen, is the rider biomechanics that you teach compatible with disciplines outside of, say, dressage and eventing, for example, Western disciplines, and is it compatible with something like natural horsemanship? Oh, look, as far as Western goes, I teach a lot of Western people, and I've got some great friends that do Western, and uh, um, they're a lot of fun, and uh, the reigning people always joke that uh, reigning is dressage, only lots of fun, <laughs> and uh, so yes, we work with them all the time. Uh, with natural horsemanship, you know, anything that's going to be kind and loving to the horse has got to be good. There can't be anything wrong with that. Colleen, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Now, I know we've got some young riders waiting anxiously for yes, you. <laughs> so I'd better let you go so we can actually go and watch what you do. Rider biomechanics isn't just about looking good. It's also about safety. 
And that's why we've got Mum out the front here holding Jaffa, our pony, nice and safely. And Emily, we're going to check out the three major tests to see whether your seat and posture is both safe and secure. And it also looks good as well. Stand up for me. I'm gonna, gonna check out your balance falling backwards. If I push your leg here, boom, I can get you off pretty easily. Didn't take much pressure. Stand up again for me. And we're gonna ensure that the foot's pointing forward and that the knee is bent until you get rid of the sticky bum coloring here at the knee. Now, if I do that, now she doesn't come off. Let's test out some of the theories. The dressage people want long straight stirrups and that might not be such a good idea. Let's have a long straight stirrup, long straight leg, as straight as you can get it. One finger and I can get you off and that's not very bright. Let's test out another theory. Stand up. Some trainers will tell you, turn your toe out to get your lower leg on. Now, just hold that there for me. With my little finger nail, not just my little finger, look. I, whoa, I can get you off just like that. It's very, very dangerous to turn your toes out. That's how you can come off. Stand up again for me. And if you see the sticky bum jodhpa, if I bend the knee, keep the foot nice and straight, then we don't come off. Keep the leg nice and bent and the other leg too. That's it, just keep your leg bent, good. Just stay there on the front of the knee. And I'm gonna push really hard, so stay there nice and hard for me. Roll the knee around. And if you're having trouble rolling the knee around, you'll see a lot of trainers will get that part of the leg and pull it around. So they're pulling that part of the leg out. That's what keeps you on. Now, Brett, I'm gonna give you 10 aids. And to one of these aids, the horse, with any luck, is going to walk. But what I don't want you to do is pull the reins. First aid is look up. Second aid, raise your nose. Third aid, raise your chin a little bit. Fourth aid, raise your chest. Fifth aid, raise your belly button. Sixth aid is lower your hands a little bit. That's it. The seventh aid is make sure your toes in, your legs aren't on anymore. And then the legs go forward and look at that. Well done, well done. So Brett Davey, here we have you uh, doing some wonderful biomechanics. What's the difference between the traditional aids of forcing the horse off the inside leg, the pushing from the outside leg to using your body? Do you find it easier or harder? Much easier. I think it's a great way for the horses to learn to do it a bit more naturally and, and they find it a lot easier to, to figure it out themselves instead of us, like you said, forcing them to do it. And what about the downward transition? That's a bit of fun, isn't it? That worked sensationally. That, that was great. So we've got Molly Lord now, and one of the things that we work on together is trying to improve the rider's hands in rising trot. And it's pretty much the same for sitting trot as well. Molly, all I'm going to get you to do is hold the saddle. Pretty simple. And look how nicely the horse's head carriage is going, and look how lovely her hands look. And while she's holding the saddle, she has the ability of the elbow to move. And the elbow can open and shut. And it looks very nice and tidy. And needless to say, it's very, very easy for the horse to be able to move nice and freely with nice, natural self-carriage. Well, I hope the tips you've learned from Collie and Kelly's clinic will help you fine tune your riding or even just stay on board. So ride safe, tune in and we'll see you here on another episode of Horse Talk TV.